All right, uh, the next section, 17, 18, and 19. We're going to deal with some radical expressions. The directions state, simplify each radical expression. All right, so 17 here, we have the square root of 32 plus 5 radical 18 minus 2 radical 72. Remember, these are unlike terms the way they are, so we need to simplify each of them before we can uh, combine it together. So as we look at it, 32, if we just look at the factorization, right, that should have been 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We have five of them. And for our radical 18, or the square root of 18, we're going to have 5 times, that should be 3 times 3 times 2. And then we're going to have a minus 2 times the square root of 72, which should end up being, in this case here, we'd have uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So as we look to simplify those down, right, we're going to be pulling out what we have. One pair of 2's, two pair of 2's. We're going to pull out a 2 and a 2, which should give us 4. So this is the same thing as 4 radical 2 plus, in this case here, we're going to have 5 times, and then when we pull out one of our 3's here, we're going to have a 3, and then what's left over is also a radical 2, and then minus this 2, and then in this case, we're going to pull out a 2, and we're going to pull out a 3, so we have 2 times a 3, and then we have that 2 left over. So we now currently have 4 radical 2 plus 15 radical 2 and then minus, uh, what is that, 12 radical 2. So we combine those together, we should have 19 radical 2 minus 12 radical 2 should be 7 radical 2. That is our answer for number 17. For number 18, we're multiplying binomials here. So when we look at those binomials, remember, order doesn't matter when you're multiplying, but it may make things easier if we look at multiplying these first two. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got a 2 radical 3 plus 1 and a 2 radical 3 minus 1. Those are what we refer to as conjugates. Right, and they're going to follow that pattern of a difference of squares, where if we're going to do an a plus b times an a minus b, it should give us a squared minus b squared, or a difference of squares. So as we do this here, I should have a 2 radical 3 squared minus a 1 squared. When I take that and I multiply those together, and let's go ahead and simplify that. 2 radical 3 squared would be like a 4 times 3, which would be 12, minus 1 squared would be 1. So 12 minus 1 should give us 11 for that first part. And then we'll bring this down here. So we have 11 times 3 radical 2 plus 4. And now it's just, you know, we're just going to distribute our 11 through to get our final answer. We should have 33 radical 2 plus 44. And that is the answer for number 18. Then we have number 19. So 19, again, we're going to need to use our conjugate. So we're going to take our, uh, our denominator, because we can't leave a radical down there, so we're going to say times a radical 5 minus 1. But if we do that to the bottom, we must also do it to the top. So looking at the bottom here, when we do that here, remember that's going to be like saying a square root of 5 squared minus a 1 squared. And on the top right now, we've got negative 4 times the square root of 5 minus 1. So let's look at the bottom first here. The square root of 5 squared is 5. 1 squared is 1, so we have 5 minus 1, which is going to give us 4. So I'm going to put that in my denominator in that next step. 
And then rather than taking it and distributing that negative 4 through on the top, right, I can say this is like a negative 4 times the quantity of the square root of 5 minus 1. If I distribute, then I have to factor back out if I'm looking to simplify here. But I can see here that 4 is a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, which is going to leave us with a negative quantity of the square root of 5 minus 1. And that's kind of ugly, so let's just go ahead here and distribute that negative through, and we'll get our final answer of a negative square root of 5 plus 1. So if you have questions, please make sure you're asking. Hopefully those helped.